Hi, welcome everybody. Today we will consider the KMV model, which is a very important industry model derived from Merton's one. The KMV model has been introduced in the late 80s by KMV, a research-driven company that soon became a leading provider of quantitative credit analysis tools. At present, the great majority of world financial institutions are subscribers of the model, something like 70% of top 50 banks, for example. From a theoretical point of view, the KMV model is not that different from Merton's one. As we will see, the KMV model essentially tries to overcome some of the flaws of Merton's model by making an extensive use of empirical data. The model and the data set on which it relies is now maintained and developed by Moody's Analytics, which acquired KMV now Moody's KMV in 2002. A fundamental quantity in the KMV model is the so-called expected default frequency, or EDF, if we use the acronym a registered trademark. The expected default frequency is essentially the probability that a given company will default within one year according to the KMV methodology. In order to understand the way in which KMV obtains the EDF, we can use Merton's model. As you can imagine, some specific parameters and implementations of the model are not completely known to the public, and we have to rely on what the company, KMV, allows us to know. In Merton's model, the one-year probability of default of a company is given by the probability that, in one year, the asset value V1, because capital T is equal to 1, will be below capital B. On the basis of what we have seen so far, we can write the equation you see on your screen. Using the symmetry property of the normal distribution, we can rewrite that probability in terms of the so-called survival function. If we have phi x, this corresponds to phi bar of minus x. In words, for a Gaussian distribution, the probability of observing something that is smaller than x is equal to the probability of observing something which is greater than minus x. Using this, we can rewrite our probability of default as the survival function of a standard Gaussian computed in D2. Yes, this is exactly D2 when capital T is equal to 1. This is the EDF under Merton's model. Once again, notice that it is expressed in terms of the survival function of a standard Gaussian. Let's call the argument of phi bar A. The real EDF of KMV is quite similar from a philosophical point of view. What changes is that phi bar is substituted with a decreasing function estimated from data. The threshold level, capital B, is replaced by another quantity that we can call B tilde. This quantity better reflects the liability structure of the company. Typically, B tilde represents the liabilities that are payable within one year. As we will see, this will have an impact on the model because now default can happen at every time before capital T. Finally, the argument A of phi bar is replaced by another simpler expression. A fundamental quantity of the KMV approach is the so-called distance to default, DD. This is the ratio between V0 minus B tilde and the product of sigma V and V0. As a curiosity, Practitioners often refer to the distance to default as the number of standard deviations from default. Empirical research shows that the quantity r minus sigma v to the power 2 over 2 is usually very close to zero, so that we can consider it 
to be irrelevant in our computations. But this means that A is approximately equal to the difference of the logarithm of V0 and the logarithm of B over sigma V. But the difference of log V0 and log B is approximately equal to V0 minus B over V0. If we substitute B with B tilde, which is the threshold used by Moody's K and V, we have that our term A can be approximated by the distance to default. The next step in the KMV approach is to substitute, as we have anticipated, phi bar with an empirical function, which we can call f bar KMV. This decreasing function is obtained using historical data. KMV has in fact estimated for virtually every meaningful time horizon and for many small intervals of DD values that we can call cells, the proportion of firms that in each cell have defaulted within a given time horizon. Please notice that the use of this empirical F overcomes one of the weaknesses of Merton's model, that is to say, Gaussianity. The use of empirical data allows Moody's KMV to better represent extreme events, and defaults are extreme events. At least, if we assume that what we have observed in the past is representative of what we can expect from the future. All in all, the EDF is given by this empirical F computed in DD. An important assumption of the KMV model is that companies having the same distance to default have the same probability to default, that is to say, the same EDF. For completeness, we have to say that Moody's KMV uses a proprietary algorithm to obtain V0 and sigma V. In other words, they do not use the minimization procedure we have seen under Merton's model. However, this is rather technical and we do not enter into details. The KMV model is hence able to overcome two problems of Merton's one, Gaussianity and the fact that default only happens in T. In fact, now, Thanks to B tilde, the possibility of defaulting within T is taken into consideration. OK, let's now see some little graphics to better understand the KMV model as a whole. This is our Merton's model once we express the probability of default in one year in terms of the survival function of a standard Gaussian. We now want to transform this model into the KMV1. This means that now we are interested in the EDF of our company. For this reason, we substitute phi bar with a decreasing function f, empirically estimated from a huge dataset of companies and defaults. Then, we compute this function in the distance to default of the company. V0 and sigma v are estimated using a special algorithm developed by KMV. And this is it. This is how to transform Merton's model into the KMV1. OK, for today, we are over. Thank you. Bye-bye.